in, in, in our discussions about trying to respond to that, I want to share with you just three lessons. I think the first is that in many communities that are affected by climate change, that they also have other multiple causes to their vulnerability. And that it is very important to situate responses with an understanding of what those multiple causes of their vulnerability is. In Malawi, in many of the communities we work with, people were vulnerable because of an interplay between years of neglect, poor services, gender inequality, chronic malnutrition, endemic HIV, lack of education, yes drought, yes erratic rains, yes crop infestation. The list can go on and it's different from place to place. Effective responses therefore need to respond to those multiple causes. And planning effective responses to adaptation I believe needs to reflect that understanding. The second lesson is that local people, like the woman I've just mentioned, almost always know what the problem is and almost always know how to respond to it. However, it's remarkable how often people are left out of the picture when we're planning uh, responses. In 2013, when Ireland was president, uh, chair we, we the presidency of the European Council, we organized an international conference on the challenges of hunger, nutrition and climate justice, the interrelationship between them. And in planning the conference, our starting point was not the issue itself, but the, our starting point was that the fact that people most affected by these issues rarely get invited to international consultations to discuss them. And we made it a central imperative not just the theme of the conference, but the participants, who, who, they were, who was going to be there. And we planned the event so that key leaders in global development were placed side by side with people from marginalized communities around the world. And that they could listen and talk to each other. And that the evidence that we're talking about, which is the theme of the conference, could be presented from the mouths of people who are affected themselves. And at the concluding session, a woman representing the Malawian Farmers Institutions stood up and said to the global leaders, you have to listen to me because I have experience and what I know is not written in the papers that you get. Interesting. Interesting. Respecting tacit knowledge and responding to it. Third lesson is about the importance of interlinkages. And we're all aware that, as been stated, 2015 is an incredibly important year on the international community. We have the uh, post-2015 new framework, we have the UNFCCC COP in Paris, we have a WTO ministerial meeting here in, in Nairobi, we have the global the financing meeting in Addis, and we've just had the uh, DRR conference in Sanda. Big fear is, and it's been stated already, is that these processes, which we're all waiting for and we want to improve, that they're all interconnected, not that they're fragmented and they're not interconnected. And that the importance of linking, for example, climate, trade, finance, development, and responses the opportunity for linking those is lost by parallel processes. And these fears may yet come to pass despite efforts trying to uh, anticipate and prevent that from happening. And that silo mentality that we're looking at possibly globally this year works at country level, at district level, and at sub-district level. Because in so many instances, Government departments, donor agencies, NGOs work side by side according to theme or sector without respecting the need for interconnected thinking and responses. And I'm throwing out a challenge to you this week is that is to look 
and how some practical ways in affecting, in, in planning to respond more effectively at the community level for breaking down those linkages and working cross-sectorally. 